You know, it's been a while since I've had a good rant. I think the last rant I did was a few months ago about the Drake equation. I've been building up some frustration and I need to let it out. And today, I'm going to very politely and respectfully rant about the Cosmic Calendar. You may have heard about the Cosmic Calendar, and maybe you haven't, but either way, I'm going to tell you about it. It's this device used in the Cosmos series, and I've seen it a few other places, where it takes the, the entire history of the universe, 13.8 billion years, and compresses it down into a single calendar year, you know, Earth around the sun kind of calendar year, and lays out some important dates. Uh, I don't remember the exact details off the top of my head, but like you get the cosmic microwave background within the first day, you get the first stars, like January-ish, the first galaxies appear in February, the Milky Way appears in like May or something, the Earth forms in early fall, life appears on the Earth in late fall, uh, multicellular creatures appear in December, humans arise on like December 28th, and like we start writing stuff on the on the last minute of the last day right before New Year's, and you know, in, in the point of the cosmic calendar... One point that I like, it lays out some major epochs in cosmic evolution. The And it's also supposed to show you how small and insignificant and inconsequential human lives are, which, you know, they kind of are, but... It, it does so in this way that, you know, compresses it like, oh, look at this tiny little slice that humanity has been around compared to the vastness of cosmic scales. Yeah, I'm I'm generally on board with that, but my issue with the cosmic calendar is that laying everything out like this of, of taking 13.8 billion years and compressing it down and assuming that the first billion years is the is just as important as the second and the third and the fourth and the fifth and the 13th and the 14th billion years <sighs> It rubs me the wrong way. It rubs me the wrong way for a couple reasons. One reason I'm going to talk about right now, and another reason I'm going to talk about next week. The reason that I'm going to talk about right now is that when we look at physical systems, you know, it, any physical system, like a particle in a box, or the weather, or the human body, or a solar system, or the whole entire universe, any of these dynamical systems with lots of things going on and lots of physics happening pretend my hands are, are physics. There's all sorts of scales. There's all sorts of important time and space scales. They're all operating simultaneously. And, and there are all sorts of important physics that are happening. And some of the physics are happening very quickly. And some of that physics are happening very slowly. And some of the time these physical processes interact and talk to each other. So just picking one scale and evenly chopping it up, uh, you're going to miss a lot of nuance. You're going to miss a lot of, you know, some important stuff. For example, for example, take protons and neutrons. All right, you know, the tiny little particles that make up atoms, take protons and neutrons and ask yourself, what is the important time scale? To, to chop up, to, to measure the life of a proton or a neutron? Like, how do I chop it up? If I want to make a, a proton calendar, how do, how do I do this? Well, you could ask, okay, if I have a proton and a neutron and a little nucleus and, and they're buzzing around, like how quickly do they interact? How often do they, they rub up against each other or exchange gluons? And this is basically what it looks like inside of an atom. Um, they're exchanging gluons all the time. How quickly do they do that? Very roughly, the, the time scale for interactions between nucleons, protons and neutrons inside of an atom, is something like a femtosecond. Femtosecond. That's 10 to the minus 15 seconds. That's, this, this, this is way too long. That's, that's like a bajillion femtoseconds. Femto, that's fast, right? So you think, you might be tempted like, okay, this is how often they interact. So this is how I have to chop up, make my little proton calendar. I have to do it at the femtosecond level. But I can also look at, say, decay times. You know, inside of a, a nucleus, protons and neutrons are pretty stable. If I yank a neutron out, however, and, hang, and it starts hanging out by itself, it's unstable. And in about 15 minutes, it'll evaporate and decay. 15 minutes. Well, 
that's another important time scale, isn't it? The decay time of a neutron. But 15 minutes is way different than a femtosecond. There's a lot of femtoseconds in 15 minutes, folks. So, so which is the important time scale? Okay, okay, so what about the decay time of a proton? If I pluck a proton out of a nucleus and let it hang out by itself, we're not exactly sure how long it lives. It could live forever. We don't know. But in a lot of grand unified theories of physics, the proton decays in, I don't know, something like 10 to the 50 years. Don't quote me on that. It's a long time. If you means if you have a proton in your hand and you stare at it and you wait for 10 to the 50 years, that's five zero, 10 to the five zero years, eventually that proton will evaporate and decay. So right away, we have three numbers. Three numbers that describe important things happening to protons and neutrons. We have the femtosecond, we have 15 minutes, and we have 10 to the 50 years. And all of these numbers are important in their own way. All of these numbers simultane all of these numbers describe important things happening to protons and neutrons, but they're at different scales. And they describe different important physics. One is the physics of interaction. One is the physics of the decay of a neutron. Another is the exotic decay of a proton, of that process. So if you want to make a proton calendar, what's your most important number? How do you chop it up? What are your days? What are your weeks? What's the equivalent? How do you pick the right window to capture the essential physics? The answer is you can't pick one window. You can't pick one calendar. You need multiple calendars happen operating in parallel that describe all the important physics. In my next video next week, I'm going to talk about how this applies to the universe and how the universe doesn't have one single important number. But you got to wait till next week. I'm sorry because because I decided to do it this way. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And please go to my Patreon, patreon.com slash pmsutter, so that you can help me keep these videos going. And I'll see you next week. I better because this is a total cliffhanger.